We have finished the second semester of our sixth grade year and I have winners and losers for the semester. What are things that went really well and what are things that really didn't? So I have just released a video on the winners of sixth grade. So if you want to check it out, I'll make sure it is linked down below. But those are our winners. Today I want to talk about our losers. What are things that didn't go quite as well as I had anticipated in the first semester of sixth grade and how did we address it or how are we addressing those things? So first up is book reports. I had a plan this year of continuing with book reports and actually making them be a little bit more writing heavy. Um, I should have known it wasn't going to work. My daughter doesn't like to write. And in fact, we just had a hard time from day one on book reports. And so what we have done with book reports is basically made them as simple as possible. My daughter is still required to read the book reports, but then she has to take a selfie of herself with um, the book and her facial expression showing what she thought of it. And then she has to write two sentences about that book report. So one is what type of book was it? Fiction, nonfiction, biography, autobiography, etc. And then number two is her recommendation. Would she recommend it or would she not and why? Now sometimes this does end up being a little bit longer than two sentences, which is a good thing. I mean, that's actually kind of my goal. But it's a minimum of two sentences and it has really helped her with her willingness to write those book reports or with her willingness to do them with less of the fight because I really want reading to be something that is more fun rather than something that is overwhelming and also before with her book reports, I would get a book report that would show every, all kinds of detail. It was almost like she was retelling the whole story rather than picking out the important aspects and being able to condense those down. So this has really helped in condensing those book reports in her thinking about what were the main ideas of this story and why would it make me recommend it or not recommend it. So we are going to kind of increase the writing and the book reports on this for second semester, but for first semester doing this, just taking this step back has really helped us. Now something else that we are doing with book reports is she is getting ready to do a newscast. And so she is going to be doing a newscast that um, for the, the book that she's reading. And she did this last year. She did this in fifth grade and she loved it. And so we're bringing that back for her to be able to do again. And she's really excited about doing that for her current book report. Um, she likes making those videos. And I'm really excited that this is something that she is enjoying doing. And she is enjoying reading more because she is not dreading these book reports so much. So book reports were a loser, but we're working on those in making them be a winner for the next time I make one of these videos. Number two in my losers category is exploring countries and cultures. We just didn't like it. I've made videos on whether I thought we were going to like it or not like it. Um, and I'll link those down below, but we ended up just not liking exploring countries and cultures because it is the same thing over and over. It's the same type of worksheet. It's the same type of research. It's the same type of report. And so we have actually changed this, um, the geography from just exploring countries and cultures to utilizing thistles and biscuits and peanut butter fish lessons as additional countries that we are studying. And that is helping so much because when we come to the countries in exploring countries and cultures, and we're doing the same thing over and over for this one, it's different than what we had been doing for the previous country. And so that is helping. This also is going to make our geography be definitely a two year geography program. So we will continue with world geography into seventh grade, which is great. That's fine. I had planned on world geography taking two years anyway, and this is just a really good way for it to happen. So geography is a winner, but exploring countries and cultures is a loser for us. The next loser we had is electives. And really the reason that it is a loser is because we haven't been doing them. <laughs> 
it's not that we don't like our electives. It's that we haven't been doing them. And that is just something that happened with the way the first semester went. We had to make socialization a priority, which it was, but that dramatically impacted our electives that we were planning on. I had planned on doing some of the Art of the Argument and some of the You Decide um, for our electives. And this was going to be electives that took place over the next three years, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. That was my plan. So it's just going to be electives that will take place after the first semester of sixth grade. So we are going, we probably will not enter into the art of the argument until seventh grade. Um, this is probably going to happen next year. I would like to get started on this in sixth grade because my daughter does really like civics. And so this is something that I think she will enjoy when we actually get it started. So our electives really was a loser, but I'm hopeful that it will turn around in um, second semester. Something else that was a loser in the first semester of sixth grade is our routine slash schedule. Um, it just didn't work out. It had worked out so well last year. And, you know, as you know, things that work one year don't always work the next year. The reason that our routine did not work well is because of sports. When we made sports and socialization a priority, obviously that did not give us enough time for our planned routine with regards to academics. And once we got off track at the beginning of the year, because my daughter's sports are fall sports. And so once we got off track, it was so hard to get back on track. And then we would take a trip and we would get off track again. And then, you know, the holidays came up and we would get off track again. And so that is something that truly has not been working well. We have, our routine has just really been shot in sixth grade. Has this happened to you? Please let me know down below because I cannot be alone in this area. And so we are going to work to get back onto our routine when we do start back in January. Um, we'll see. I'm hoping that without those external factors and without the weather being nice, you know, when we're inside anyway, that the routine will come back fairly easily, very fairly quickly because it's a good routine for us. It's, you know, get up in the morning, get started. We just do a flow for the subjects and it works out well, or at least it did. So I'm hoping it will work out well again. Uh, we can't come up with anything else that we think is going to work better, although we have tried. So routine, please come back to us and work well the second semester of sixth grade. And now my fifth loser, which really kind of breaks my heart, is Masterbook Science. If you know Masterbook Science, it is set up with short, easy lessons, and then you have a blue experiment or activity that is for third through fifth grade, and then you have a green one that is for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, and those green ones just for the majority did not work. They just didn't work for us. We need something more for science. After the first unit of Machines in Motion, we did get out of physical world and move into chemistry and ecology. This has a lot to do with the biome section that we use with geography, and so that worked well. And now we are doing the properties of matter, and this has been great. But again, those green boxes aren't working. But between the two of these books, we will finish off the year with God's Design series and then we will change it up for next year. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.